today we're going to be talking about the business risk of IoT, but what we're going to do it is we're going to provide some more details and views around IoT from the solutions level. Um, but we're going to break it down into three parts. We're going to break it down into visibility, then the categorization of uh, systems, and then securing and how to take those categorizations of visibility into a secure environment. So at this point in time, I'm going to introduce Craig Hypes. He's from um, Order Technologies, and he's going to start with the visibility side and roll into some categorization. Craig, are you willing to take over? Sure am. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen and uh, let me know if you can see. I can see it. Okay, great. So there's an old adage, you can't protect what you can't see. So a lot of all the security premises is that if I can actually see what's connected to my network, I can then begin to understand what needs to be protected. And we're going to take that ability to see to new levels. So with order, what we're able to provide is through passive monitoring of the network. So we're not in line, we're not installing agents, but looking at copies of the traffic on the network, taking visibility to that next level of not only what is connected to my network, uh, but with fine grained fidelity, and as well as rich context about things like the make, the model, the serial number, are these devices, now that I know things like what type of device, what operating system it's running, can I correlate that to known vulnerabilities, things like manufacturing recalls and, and the uh, ICS cert uh, databases and other feeds of knowing whether or not these devices are vulnerable. And then we're gonna take it, get to that next level, which is, how do I now protect these devices? Because often when you've started down a path of how do I protect my devices uh, and start providing segmentation in an effective way, you're, even if you knew what that device was, very few can actually say with certainty that this device should only be doing these things. And that, that's a very difficult uh, task to do for every type of device on your network and instantiate the right segmentation policies. So what you have is often policies are too watered down, if you will, or too permissive, and you never really get to the establishment of, uh, of a minimum trust, some people say zero trust type of uh, architecture. So here you're actually seeing all the devices that were discovered in this environment, uh, how many are online, how many are offline, uh, the cases of what are the risk ratings for all those devices and different categories of devices. And when we look down this uh, list, you'll see that they're automatically grouped into their high level groupings of the type of device. And uh, even down to the long tail of, you know, I've got even a few of these. Yes, people have actually pulled up into the parking lot and associated with your Wi-Fi from their, from their automobile. Uh, so it is truly uh, finding all things connected uh, as well as gateway. So there's often devices get connected to the device through some other gateway and being able to know what those are. You're seeing rich categorization, whether it be specific to um, healthcare, industrial, uh, but you, uh, all organizations will uh, acknowledge that uh, beyond just the user workstations and the servers and laptops, yeah, we've got some cameras that are uh, that are watching our parking garage. We have security cameras that are monitoring our system. We have uh, things like phones and uh, things that are managing the buildings, the HVAC systems. Uh, and as you get through it and you start through a tool like this is then you gain a better understanding of the, the tremendous number of things which are actually connected to your network that you didn't realize. I love the comments sometimes that I hear is, uh, do you allow, do you have any gaming or a uh, personal assistant uh, devices on your, no, we don't allow those. Like you don't know what you don't know until you actually analyze your network. And then getting down to very detailed classifications and operating systems. So how do I build a policy, for example, around things which are still running Windows uh, 7, which is now uh, no longer supported uh, by the environment? How could I create a policy at my firewall, for example, that say, 
I'm only going to allow things that are current, supported, and patched to gain access to resources out to my environment. It's with this type of knowledge. And certainly, while managed systems um, like workstations might have tools which track that, IoT is very commonly running these very lightweight kernels, these deprecated or uh, outdated operating systems. And those aren't things that you replace every three or four years. And sometimes they can't be patched. So you see that there's a wealth of information that's being tracked. How are things, you know, where are they connected? How did they connect to the network? Wired, wireless, which SSID, with VLAN? Or if I have VLANs that are designated for specific use cases or locations, show me all the devices. Do I have critical devices sitting in the same network as uh, some other things which might be at risk? That person who plugged in the IP-enabled coffee machine or refrigerator or the vending machine, how many times uh, we've actually seen cases where those have been plugged into the same switch as some critical function. Uh, but you can see this goes down into very details of how we first understand in a very simple and passive way what is connected. Since most organizations do have things like facility devices, which manage our environment, I'll drill in for a little bit here. And you see there's a list of these devices, you know, they're at Mac and IP address, and this is what just this right here, this column is what normally customers see, right? You've got some type of scraping tool that shows you all the MAC addresses. Maybe there's uh, some IP address that was learned at some time. But what you don't have often is the what type of device. Oh, that's a facility device. It's this specific type. And let's drill into some of those details. So here I'm seeing things like the manufacturer uh, gleaning things like even serial number. Oh, this is one of those devices still running Windows 7. Um, and what what type of device? What's the risk and alarms and, and vulnerabilities associated? Where is it located in my network? And this is critical because firewalls typically see things by their IP address. So just like Back uh, it was a number of years ago that in identity based firewalling was introduced and it really changed the game, right? I could now associate a user to an IP and enforce policies at my firewalls based on their user or their group membership. But what we're now bringing to market is a IoT based firewall, something that now allows me for things that don't have users things that cannot tell me what they are. Now we're telling the firewall system what those devices are with, are they vulnerable? Are there any known security instances? So you're seeing things like CVEs being uh, associated with these devices. What security incidents have been tracked uh, for these particular devices? What have they been involved? In this case, we're tracking that it is an outdated OS. And then more importantly, what is it doing on my network? Is what it's doing expected behavior? Even if I don't even get to enforcement or I haven't, it hasn't reached the firewall in my, within my organization, is it behaving as it should as an individual device, but in the context of other like devices? So if I have a hundred of these devices which are behaving one way and I see one or two which are, have this, this what's pointed out by these yellow uh, little tiles, so in this little spiral staircase, what I'm able to do is walk the conversation. So each step in this staircase is a different peer that it's talking to, port and protocol, what, uh, what application, when did it occur, how much traffic, was that normal behavior? And being able to see those conversations and then walk down the, the path to say, what other conversations with other targets has it had? And then create an establishment of normal versus good, behavior in the context of other devices of that type. So being able to classify, group them, and understand behavior at that group level, and then take it to the next level, which is, how can I then translate that into segmentation policy? So that's what our integration with uh, uh, solutions like Checkpoint Security Management System is all about. Let's take this rich detail and feed that to the firewall. Turn it into an IoT-based firewall know which ones are at risk so I can actually have different policies by feeding information like the risk level and score or its operating system into the firewall. Now I can build effective business relevant policies without trying to worry about where it got plugged into the network, what IP address it got today, which could change 
certainly with DHCP or maybe I plug this device into another switch port, let's make sure we uniquely track that device and inform the firewall about that, as well as providing details about its communications in a way you're noticing what we did, we just automatically translated the behavior, things that were in baseline, things which were safe and approved, to things which weren't expected by this device, and generate segmentation policy about things which should be expected versus things which, which should not, and do that in an intelligent way. So, correct. So, yes. so this, uh, all the stuff that we're seeing, I assume that this is dynamic information. And where does it come from? Is it coming... Um, from multiple sensors, and are the sensors hardware? Or are they software? I mean, how does the, you know, the logic behind it look? What's it look like? Great question. So uh, typically, a sensor or a data collection uh, device that could be a hardware appliance could be a virtual appliance installed on one of your uh, virtualized infrastructure that sees copies of traffic. Could even be installed on this as a piece of software on the switches themselves. And being able to take that deep packet inspection, that protocol decode and breaking it apart to say, beyond just a MAC address, what is this device? Let's pull, peel out that rich detail about what this device is. Uh, and I'll take another quick example. Uh, is, is security cameras and devices, and be able to ferret out some very rich detail about these things right from watching the applications. But that flow information, this information is being able to, we can not only get that through direct watching of copies of the traffic, but things like your firewalls, which can provide flow information are also sources because you might say, well, I have a, um, uh, a gateway that's sitting out at my branch offices or uh, something that's protecting the edge of my network, my, my data center or within my campus. It'd be great if I could get additional visibility into the communications because that's the true foundation of building an effective minimum trust segmentation policy at the firewall. So it is that combination of many sources, but through uh, direct inspection of a sensor, combining that with flow data, we also will track information. We will communicate with the networking devices so that you can have that uh, the details about where things are connected and how they're connected, which VLAN. And that, again, I'll just emphasize, is so critical because the firewall can now effectively have detailed information about every device independent of where it gets connected, which VLAN, which IP address, whether it's static or dynamic that assigned to it at any time. That help um, in terms of these sources? It did, and I'm, uh, this is John. I'm just jumping in. Uh, Craig lost power uh, at his location, so he's, he's trying to reconnect. So. Uh, I, I appreciated the, the answer and, and looking at the um, device inventory, these are just, uh, call it filters that, 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 uh, that you're running to give different views. Is that uh, That's accurate? Correct. That's okay. correct. That's awesome. so, so, what we, so while there might be some default like, hey, show me details about uh, device information, which gives information about the operating system type, the ver version, uh, but you know, the, any one of these could be something that I want to see very specifics. If I'm integrated with an asset management system, what information does that system have? What about ServiceNow? And I could then say, if you have any information about these devices that's known to that system, how do I provide a comprehensive view or data lake, if you will? Because now once I have this rich information, it's the foundation of all other security typically, to then feed that into all of the other systems, whether it be NAC into your security event management system, your vulnerability management system. So now you've really tied together this information about these devices uh, or create your own custom views. So it's, it is very powerful in that regard. And each one of those tiles that we were showing uh, previously is just another window into the uh, uh, into those devices in the system. So each one of these can 
just be a hot link and say, jump to, oh, I have part of my network which is being managed, say, by Meraki. What does Meraki know about this device? I'll take it to one other piece here, which is not just understanding what those devices are and what how they communicate at a micro level, but let's look at it at a big picture level and say, I've got those physical security devices, and I've got, uh, in this case, you know, what types of devices are in that group? Which VLAN? So if you have VLANs that are, have specific purpose, knowing which, why maybe it's a case where you say, why are these two devices, VLAN 205, I shouldn't have any cameras or security devices in that VLAN or in a specific subnet. This one device, we don't even know what its subnet is. And being able to break that out. I see there's communications, these different things based on their groupings that are, exist. What are the things that communicates within my data center? What are the things that communicates outside my data center or outside my network completely? In this case, we see there's communications to malicious URLs outside the uh, US. What is that? Oh, wow, I have my that camera. Uh, it's actually communicating. It's uh, communicating with China, Germany, Japan. And be able to say, oh, this is something that I did not expect. And when you actually drill into the security events for these particular devices. What's interesting, in the security incident itself, I drilled into that, it would actually tell you what was the source and what's the remediation? Block the access to that domain in your firewall. Well, let's get to that. So let's actually show a working system where you have the information in the checkpoint through its IoT protect and its integration with these IoT uh, with order to be able to say, what are the things that I learned through order? And in this case, it uh, should be a number of all those devices. I can then see what were all that, inf that rich information, what type of device, the make, manufacturer, the operating system, or the category, uh, what are the different categories that I could, uh, you know, that are in the system and being able to see what those are. Why, why is this important? Because you can build policy on all of these. So I could have a policy that's built maybe around my network cameras or storage devices or building automation or around specific types of devices in the system. All of these attributes are now accessible to say I need a policy around my cameras which are still running a specific type of operating system or a specific version of the operating system, or maybe devices that are have a specific risk rating. So that's where you, what you're seeing here above here is the ability to say, uh, I've got a policy, in this case, medical devices are allowed to a specific domain. These business relevant policies are now enabled. You don't have to know what specific IP addresses were assigned to these devices and which ones are dynamically were assigned um, you know, a specific risk level or at this point in time have a specific operating system version. You build the business relevant policies based on that rich context that's been fed and the IP information bound to its current specific MAC address is maintained automatically. And now you can see the types of governance policies that you can build to facilitate security without worrying about where things got plugged in or creating change control to say, oh, we now need to add this particular subnet because we added devices of that type into that subnet and vice versa. If something <laughs> got plugged into the wrong VLAN or subnet, they will get their respective policies. Now, I mentioned a lot about understanding the communications because this really is gives you a lot of power to have what I call a top-down business security policy. Thou shall not allow certain devices to do certain things or permit them to do certain things. But what about, just because I know what a device is, and I'm gonna pull in a specific uh, example. And it's, it's, a, it's a medical one, but it's one that's going to uh, be applicable to any type of device, uh, especially specifically when you look at IoT. IoT devices aren't things that connect to your network and start trying to surf the web and access you know, Amazon and do things that it shouldn't be doing, they tend to, they connect to usually a, uh, some type of controller or server, they get bootstrapped, which basically says, I am your, you know, 
the source of communications and management and get their configuration. And they do a specific function in your environment, whether it's building automation, whether it's industrial, you know, talk, a camera talking to a video recorder, or in this case, it's a you know, patient monitors talking to their management system. And here you can see that there's a total of 21 communications, which are deemed, ex you know, expected. But here we see it's got three, commu you know, communications to this destination, which were unexpected. Well, let me translate that into a security policy. And you can see all those yellow entries, those are not part of my baseline. I'm going to exclude those. And I want to take it to the next level. Put it in a language that my enforcement devices. So here I can say, let's look at that checkpoint firewall. What would that policy look like if I was to apply it to checkpoint? Or maybe I want to push a policy to a local switch, uh, even down, you know, to different things in the network to say, maybe I want to put some, you know, but really I think where the segmentation journey really the best place to start is at your firewall. It's highly scalable. It can provide very tight controls, whether it's based on an IP, a domain or other factors. And it's a really good way to say, I've got some serious security requirements that I need to meet. I can now at least make sure that if things are communicating say outside my organization or into my data center, Let's make sure that it's only the things that they need to talk to. Hey, Greg. So, yes. Quick question. Uh, somebody asked a question. It's like, can you detect if a device like an IP camera has punched through its firewall? I know the answer is yes, but you can, can you describe how, let, let's say, we, you know, how, how do we categorize a bunch of uh, um, security cameras? And then, you know, I know you've bounced through it just a little bit. And then how does that, uh, translate into a policy, let's say, for a firewall. Um, and, and, you know, the other, the other part with that, you know, uh, to, part of the answer to that question is if you saw the um, traffic flows um, that for about a specific device, those traffic flows would show you immediately if one of your cameras was actually traversing out through the firewall. Um, and that's, that's something that we would, we could show you in a traffic flow. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so right there, those traffic flows right there at the top side, you can see the traffic on the inside and then the internet. Um, and so if you, if your policies and your rules are defined as being, um, no, no IP cameras are allowed to go out my network. If you saw a connection going out through your network, through this internet, then that's, that's an issue as related to your policy or how you wanted to make it work. So that's one way, but you know, I guess my question is more on, uh, can we auto-generate, and what do you mean by auto-generate? A policy that, you know, we pick up something here, you categorize um, a single device or multiple devices, and you uh, create the policy on the firewall. I know you were working down that process, but I sort of just wanted to, you know, hit that oh, home. Great question. So we looked at it at this, this is a single device. And then I showed how you could actually look at it a very big picture and say, which, which things have actually punched out of my, you know, out of outside my organization or through a specific points in my network and where they're going and, and be able to see it to this big macro level. I'm going to actually take it down a notch. Maybe it's for a specific uh, camera or a specific device in my network. And I want to say, how do I limit that? And I'll take an example here. We have a number of different cameras. You say, oh, I can actually build a policy based on uh, these 20 different cameras. What are the communications specific to those, that set of cameras? Now, that, that's all well and good. And you could say, wow, now I can, for that camera, and I'll show you how we do the generations because now we know what the communications are for this device. Um, in this case, they're all internal. So this one, there's no external punching out, say, through an uh, edge firewall. Um, but the way organizations typically look, they say, well, this might be too granular because probably even though they're different camera models, I want a policy that covers uh, multiple cameras. But it's also often the case where customers will say, but I don't want just one policy for all 
network cameras because guess what? Some of these are being used to monitor uh, my waiting room. Some are being used to monitor the parking garage. Uh, could be if you're an industrial, it's monitoring the manufacturing plant floor. And certainly there are distributed organizations that might say, well, I have some cameras that are managed by this team, some cameras that are managed at this location by another team. So what we have done is we've introduced this notion of a policy profile, which allows you to group things based on any metric you choose. So I could say all cameras that are in this location that are used you know, this type and manufacturer, I can create those groups. And what we do then is generate the policy for that select group. So hopefully that kind of answered um, that at many different levels, because we're watching the communications and the moment you group them in a certain way, we are then generating this ACL language that's very specific, not just to these devices, specific to your environment because well I've seen cases where a vendor might say well we generally use these ports and protocols and there's always exceptions to the rule and it and, and certainly they will never know well what are the target things it might be that I know it needs to talk RTSP for example for a camera but to which devices who is the source of that information so what we're actually doing in this case is being able to say Let's enable, I'm going to, uh, in this case, show that a dynamic policy generation. And here I had already a dynamically generated policy for a security camera. But in before your eyes, you're actually seeing the policy being dynamically updated to account for this other IoT device. Here it's specific to a medical device, but this is true in terms of how you would handle and be able to apply policy to other devices, you know, especially in IoT where they have prescriptive communications, what supports, what protocols, what destinations do these devices need to do? And what I've just done is I've created a true, um, you know, I'll call it a, uh, a zero trust policy, meaning only do the things that you're supposed to do and nothing else. So, um... One more question. I know we're talking a lot about IoT here, and this one, I, you know, I know we didn't discuss earlier, so I'm going to ask it and um, see what happens. Um, you also mentioned the lots of laptops and other pieces in there. Uh, there's integrations with Checkpoint, which we're talking about, integration with other firewalls. Do you also integrate, integrate with NAC solutions like um, Cisco, ICE, or anything like that? You bet. So, um, you know, in that particular one, since I spent over 20 years at Cisco uh, and, and running uh, as a technical engineer for their uh, ICE product, but it's, it's true for other integrations with other NAC solutions like ClearPass uh, and, um, and others, which is allows us to provide and feed that rich detail of those devices into that target system. So now they are, you're no longer, which is very common, is struggling to understand what devices are because NAC only takes you so far. They see a MAC address. They see DHCP data. Okay, so I know it's a Windows system that's running Dell. Well, is that a industrial workstation? Is that a television? Is it a switch? Um, you know, that's the type of visibility you just can't get with traditional classification systems and that information. So now you have the ability to create a consistent policy for your campus as well as to the edges. And I would argue that again, that while we, it's an excellent solution to provide a holistic segmentation policy, I do say that the firewalls provide that, that first, uh, the lowest hanging fruit to start providing restrictions that do not uh, that that's um, protecting the network without getting into some of the additional levels of requirements and complexity of doing things within the campus. But we will certainly integrate with those systems and greatly accelerate the visibility and the time to automate, truly automate segmentation policy with those systems. What I actually, uh, another anecdotal piece is that, so if you did have something like ICE where it allows this thing called tagging, 
to be assigned, um, that information automatically gets fed into the checkpoint. So all of these right now, these are SGTs that we've actually populated and assigned the members of those devices. So that's another way of that. I use something called SGTs. Even I don't even have to do that, that thing called group-based policy segmentation. I can use my firewalls to do all of my segmentation for the places where I positioned it to control access, say, to the uh, outside of my, you know, the, my edge, network edge, to my branch fire, to my branch locations, to my data center. And in some cases, now pushing that deeper into your campus because a lot of the challenges in the past of putting in, say, a firewall into closer to the edge was, well, I don't see how I can effectively create segmentation policies to have an impact. Now you do. So let me ask you just a couple of other questions. Um, one is uh, setting this up, right? Is it, what does it take to set it up? Where's the management sit? I mean, does it sit locally? Does it sit in the cloud? Um, how long does it take the sensor? What are the gotchas with setting it up? You know, not, I mean, we don't need to go into too much detail. And then how long does it take to really collect information? And then the, and, you know, I know it's, it feels like a political questionnaire now, you have to remember all of them. But, uh, and then finally, once you collect information, does your system automatically keep learning about something? Like maybe it'll classify it as one thing right when it first sees it, but as it learns more about its characteristics, it reclassifies it a little bit uh, in deeper detail. So set up, sure. how long, where does management server sit, and uh, how does the classification work, and how quick does it uh, um, start getting information? Sure. So uh, first off, we, um, we have the, the management platform. So in this case, we're, I'm ac accessing the, the management GUI of the order application. This can sit on-premise. So we have organizations that say, I'm not – well, I have a cloud strategy. I'm not yet fully cloud first. Uh, and we then also provide this ability to host this as a service or in a public or private cloud. Um, so for those customers who have a cloud first strategy and the information that's fed to it from say the um, uh, a sensor is trickled information. And the reason I say that is that uh, we are not sending hordes of information across the wire. We collect, we parse, we pull out the key information and that is fed as a fraction, a trickle of information to our management gateway. So the setup is very simple. We actually have like plug, what we call our plug and play. So you plug a box in and it automatically connects to the management platform. Uh, the, the, the time in terms of to get that rich visibility of being able to see that information. You say, you know, is this something that I have to wait like three months, four months? And that, that was common. Uh, that was a common discussion when you looked at, say, a NAC system where to start getting visibility, it was a lot of manual effort and it took often months or beyond months. Uh, we are something that you could, after plugging it in, you go that uh, proverbial coffee break, go out for lunch and you come back and you will start seeing, now this is a small environment, but we certainly have had customers that, you know, but, you know, by the end of the day, they were seeing tens of thousands of devices that were now classified in the system. Awesome. Hey, I'm not, I, I apologize for cutting you off on this, but um, we've talked about visibility. We talked about how we can categorize these systems in another part. And I kind of want to uh, bring it, turn it over to Pablo for a few minutes to talk about how to secure this. Um, so, uh, you know, can, uh, we're going to switch over screens and then um, we're going just from everybody on, on the piece, we're going to reference this as part of um, order with the visibility and categorization and then integration into Checkpoint and having solutions like Checkpoint to be able to do this. And as you heard me say earlier, um, order works with other solutions like uh, NAC solutions. Um, and so there, there, there is this part, one of the things that we do as an organization um, is work with uh, companies to integrate all these pieces together. The idea is it's gonna auto-generate, make your life a whole lot easier, but there's always some type of engineering involved. Uh, and either you need an expert or you need to hire an expert. 
um, and we're here to help with that type of stuff. So Pablo, I'm gonna turn it over to you for a few minutes um, and we're gonna go from there and I wanna make sure I reserve enough time to uh, talk about our follow-ups, um, which could be a free sensor or a free checkup, um, but Pablo, it's in your hands. Okay, so I just want to describe uh, briefly what we have here. I have two uh, environments. These are pretty straightforward. We have our network, our local network. We have a checkpoint security gateway, which is connected to a security management server. Uh, and we also have a order sensor within the environment. Now, the order sensor is doing all of the discovery and it's communicating with the management server. So with this implementation, you have uh, you know, next level visibility. You have detection, monitoring, and policy automation. So the management server uh, integration is pretty straightforward. Within this environment, the only thing I have to do here is I, I connect to the discovery service and I create that object. So that object is a, I can select here my object name. And then I connect to the host name. The host name is given by the by vendor, and then we have a, a pre-shared key. Now we tie this into the specific gateway that we're going to be using, and then we tie it into the policy. Once we we connect to that service, we then have the ability to query uh, and import objects directly. But we will also see that this is going to be uh, populating. This is going to start showing us. Uh, discovered objects. Now, in this environment, I have uh, 89 uh, assets within IoT. Uh, the, the also, uh, once you connect to the service, you will see uh, right now I have, this is a brand new environment. This is an open policy, pretty much an allow any, any. Uh, this is a separate policy that was imported from the uh, discovery service, which is already pre-built. Now, in this section, you're going to see two types of rules. Uh, this policy has the automated rules, which you saw earlier uh, when we deployed uh, something with security cameras. So these, are, these rules are going to be changed dynamically. Uh, they're going to be automated. But you also have the ability to build granular policy around IoT, IoT assets. Now, let me show you a different one that I have on a different environment here. Uh, it's funny that we talked about uh, gaming devices. I actually have a policy, an IoT policy, uh, on a separate layer that points to uh, specific users can access gaming devices. Now these are discovered as Xbox, uh, Sony PlayStation. Uh, there's another one for specific devices for streaming like uh, Alexa, Fire TV, uh, lights. You know, I, I, I allow a uh, certain subnet to access lights, uh, but I don't allow it to go outside. Uh, so these could be controlled wirelessly from inside the network. So this gives you an idea of, uh, of how to build policy around this. Now, you have the ability to use source and destination. Uh, you can query the objects directly and uh, use that as your source. Now, as far as protocols, a checkpoint can, uh, read up to, uh, I believe there's uh, 1,600 different types of IoT and OT protocols, applications, and commands. So you can get very, very granular with, with uh, configuring your policy. So the next piece is we, we talked a little bit about visibility, but also how to see the traffic and how to build traffic, how to build your policy on the traffic. Now, within the checkpoint uh, environment, in this environment, uh, this is just an example of a Raspberry Pi uh, device inside the network that's being attacked. So I have that threat level visibility. I can write policy around this directly through this environment. Uh, I can get a general overview on what's happening within my network. Now, as long as I have my IoT policies defined, I can start building policy from my dashboard here from this visibility. So we have a threat visibility. We also have a application visibility, applications and protocols. Some of these IoT devices might be using specific uh, applications or might be connecting to services. So all of that visibility comes in through here. 
Now, uh, what we do is in the checkpoint environment also is we do the, uh, the IoT checkup and security checkup. This is a pretty much a report that we put together that uh, scans everything that's going on in this network. Now, this network doesn't have much activity, but it's a full assessment that shows you uh, what needs to be uh, looked at and also assists you with uh, building a better policy within uh, any devices that are being attacked. So we have multiple ways of, of looking at that traffic. Uh, I know one of the questions was to see if we have the ability to detect an IP camera going through the firewall. So we, yes, we, we should be able to see that traffic. Now, if we don't have IoT policy, all we're gonna be seeing is pretty much um, just IP traffic, like log, uh, source destination and whatnot. But this gives you an idea of, of how to have that next level visibility and in, in, in the secure your environment within IoT. Nice, thank you, thank you. Um, we're gonna, we're to the place now that I wanted to you know, make a couple little bit of offers to folks and then uh, circle back for final comments from Craig and from Pablo. Um, but one quick question for you, Pablo, is um, the, the checkpoint console, the management server that we're seeing, can that reside? You know, we, you know, I asked the same question of um, order. Where does this management server reside? Does it reside in the cloud? Does it reside on premise? Does it reside in a portal? Um, you know, just, you know, or does it reside in all the above? So this could be uh, any... It could, the, the management server can, can be uh, the gateway as well. You can have a standalone environment. The management server can live in the cloud, can live on premise, pretty much can live anywhere. Now the enforcement points have to be local. So uh, as Craig mentioned, you know, these, those enforcement points can also be virtual. So, uh, so from a firewall perspective, you have the same capabilities. You have to have the local enforcement point part of the network. Okay. Um, so I wanted to make this one offer for everybody. Uh, yeah, I always try to have some type of follow-up. This is the third IoT event that we've had over the last two weeks. We had a, a, a high-level one just to talk about IoT. Then we transferred into a medical IoT roundtable we had a couple days ago. And then this one was a deeper dive into showing people so they can actually see what they would see inside their environment. Because a lot of people go, oh, IoT, I, I understand we might have some risk, but what is the risk? How does it work? You know, how, how did you, you know, what would I, what, 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 um, what would I see? And so what we'd like to offer up for anybody that's on here is two things. One is um, we can offer up a free proof of, proof of concept where we will deliver a um, IoT sensor to your organization, help you get it set up, and then we'll run it for like 30 days. And we can show you how and what is happening on your network. Um, and then on the flip side, Pablo was showing like a checkpoint um, not a checkpoint, but a Tenio security checkup. We could also do a security checkup in your environment if you're really concerned about overall. Um, so Craig, um, Craig Hypes, I'm gonna um, give it back to you for a minute to give your final, um, final thoughts, and then we can wrap up and give some people their time back. Sure, so, you know, I could start it out the session is talking about Security starts with visibility, and that's the, 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 it's been a, a long-standing challenge for all of the other systems in the environment. So taking that in a very uh, simple, easy to deploy way where you see immediate outcomes, being able to then enhance the visibility for all of your other systems, and now provide the ability now to have business relevant segmentation policy and even for those things, and you might say, well, I'm not ready for all this segmentation, at least maybe not in my campus. Are they still, are they vulnerable? Are they behaving as, as they should? But when you're ready to take that step to say, how do I start providing some proactive controls? Let me show my you know, the, the leadership that we can actually start when they uh, ask about certain 
vulnerabilities and risks and exploits that I have a way to prescriptively say, this is the things that these devices need to be doing and actually apply those in a simplified way, uh, starting with those checkpoint firewalls um, and then you know, looking at how to also leverage that same intelligence to other parts of your network and other systems. Awesome. I, I want to appreciate both of you guys for being on today. So we started out about talking about the risk of IoT. Um, and what, what most people are going to have to think about, we've had multiple questions with a lot of folks and we've asked, you know, do you have an IoT policy? Do you have a policy wrapped around what you're supposed to do with securing IoT? And 99% of the organizations say no. Um, I shouldn't say 99. I should say probably 95% say no. Uh, our suggestion is start with visibility. Start with the idea of trying to figure out what you don't know. Um, visibility is key. Uh, and I, uh, 2021 is going to be the year of visibility. Uh, so I'm going to steal it and let you guys use it. But visibility is key. Um, but what do you do with that visibility is the next question, right? Um, in cybersecurity, prevention is the first thing that you should be worrying about. And visibility, how do you take visibility, which is detection and understanding, and convert that into prevention? And that's the integration between a system like uh, order and IoT, clock, collecting that information, categorizing it in a way that's usable, and then implementing it in an, an environment to secure it. So we will be reaching out to each one of you. Um, you can let us know if you're interested um, uh, for a, a free proof of concept, um, for a, a sensor or a checkup. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll be reaching out to you. And thank you for your all's time today.